Am I the a-hole for walking out of the restaurant over a joke between my fiancé and his friend? I female 30 used to work as a sex worker in my early to mid-twenties. Not so proud of it but I had no choice. I had to get money to be able to keep my siblings and myself from homelessness. I met my fiancé Martin male 32 over a year ago, he knows every single detail about my life and every day tells me he loves me no matter what. His family are literally saints so I kind of hit the jackpot in the in-laws department however, his friends, not so much. Some of them make comments about my past and throw in some words that I find rather offensive but I thought to myself girl you just being too sensitive, just let it go. Last week we went out to the restaurant to celebrate Martin's birthday with his friends and family. One of his closest friends Antonio has a habit of making nasty jokes and laughing publicly. Martin was talking to his friends while I was talking to my mother-in-law talking. Antonio looked around and praised the restaurant and the atmosphere for the party. Martin nodded after Antonio told him he's lucky he got all that for his birthday then complained about not having family to celebrate his upcoming birthday. He then told Martin perhaps I can borrow, my name, for some blowjob on my upcoming birthday. I was appalled, but when I turned to see how Martin would react, Martin just laughed and said ha 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 well, how much are you willing to pay? I froze. Now I might have overreacted but I had a terrible look on my face as I looked at Martin. Then I got up, gathered my stuff including the gift I got him then started making my way out. My in-laws noticed and I could hear Martin yelling after me. He followed me outside begging me to wait but I kept walking. He said it was just a joke between him and his buddy and I was overreacting for no reason at all. I started arguing with him about how he was not only okay with his buddy humiliating me but playing along in. His god-awful joke. He insisted I overreacted and was being oversensitive. I got into a taxi and went home. After he came back, he started complaining about how I embarrassed him and ruined the celebration by walking out. I reminded him of what he did and he said it was just a joke. And the only one who has an issue with my past is me and I should seek therapy for being too sensitive all the damn time. Not the a-hole. Dump him. Talking about pimping you out isn't a joke it's a fundamental lack of respect for you. You're not being sensitive and you could be proud of your past as a sex worker and it still wouldn't make what he and his friends are doing slash saying okay. This FYI is exactly why they always have something to say because Martin not only allows it or participates. Time to pack your things and go up. Martin is never going to respect you and you absolutely deserve a partner who respects you. Am I the a-hole for threatening to call the cops if my son's stepdad drives his car? I share custody of my son Andy, male 16, with his mother Eliza. Eliza is married to Scott, who had three kids and they have had three more together, so a total of six kids, seven the weeks Andy is with them. Eliza and I, and Scott, who won't stay out of it, have constant conflict over Andy. I have a good job with a high salary at my family's company. Eliza and Scott do not make a lot of money. To be honest, I have no idea how they make it on what they earn with such a large family, but as long as Andy is taken care of I know it's not my business. We ended up in court over whether Andy was to attend private school and I won, but in addition to paying for the school I also had to be the one to provide transportation to and from school. So I was relieved when Andy became old enough to drive and helped him get his license as soon as he could. I bought him a car, a 2021 Mazda SUV. I am aware that a 16-year-old does not need a new car but it had one of the highest safety ratings around and, quite frankly, I can afford it. Eliza and Scott told me I was being a pretentious prick. I paid for the car and it is in my name until Andy turns 18. I also pay for the upkeep of the car and insurance. Andy pays for gas. Neither Eliza nor Scott pays a dime toward the car. Last week Andy was on spring break so he wasn't in school. He called me to ask if I could bring over some model paints he had left at my house. I asked him why he didn't drive over and get them and learned that he was being punished and not allowed to drive. I drove over to drop off the supplies and when I get there his car wasn't in its usual spot. I asked Andy where his car was and was told that Scott had driven it to work. I told Andy that he wasn't allowed to have anyone else drive the car, but Andy said that Scott didn't ask, he just took the keys. I was not a happy camper. When I bought the car for Andy, I had the conversation with Scott slash Eliza that no one besides Andy was to drive the car. Eliza told me that their car wasn't working and I replied that they are not to drive Andy's car. Eliza gave me her usual rolled eyes. The next day I purposefully drove by and saw the car was not in the driveway. I called Andy and asked him if Scott had taken the car again and he said yes. I called Eliza and told her that she one hour to get Andy's car back in the driveway or I was calling the police and reporting it stolen. She yelled at me but when she realized I wasn't backing down called Scott to bring the car back. He did, making it 10 minutes before I would have called the police, and he yelled at me about making him miss work and therefore lose pay. I told him I didn't care and if I found out he had done it again I wouldn't bother giving him a warning, I would just call the cops. Both Eliza and Scott are furious with me and even Andy thinks I went too far. So I am here to get an unbiased opinion. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. I bet he wasn't allowed to drive just so Scott could drive it to work. 
Am I the a-hole for signing over guardianship of my autistic sister to the state? My last parent died six months ago, and while my profoundly, non-verbal, autistic sister lives in a group home, I have become her legal guardian. Because she's in a group home I'm not responsible for her physical care, and she needs a lot of it, she has a one-on-one aid even in the group home at all times, she's aggressive and needs constant supervision. In other words, she's no rain man. My parents were not entirely forthcoming with the amount of work this would require. I am a mother of three small children, six-year-old girl and three-year-old twin boys, one of which is currently battling cancer. There is always some kind of need with my sister, the phone is glued to my face, I always have to be available for emergencies, have to constantly make medical decisions, have to constantly talk to new staff due to high turnover rates etc. I have to constantly advocate to make sure someone isn't messing up and I'm exhausted. It's gotten to the point where my kids have had to take the back burner, I know what that's like and I refuse to do that to them. Also my marriage has been suffering because I've had no time to spend with my husband as there's always something. The final straw was when at the last minute I had to miss my daughter's ballet recital, which devastated her she was looking forward to this for months, because the group home gave me no notice that they are no longer taking clients like my sister and I had two weeks to find a new place and I got this phone call hours before her recital, I had to send my neighbor to go and pick her up. By the skin of my teeth I found a place for her, but this was the final straw. I feel so guilty like I've failed my parents and sister, but I am a mother and my family must come first, period. All extended relatives are saying I'm an a-hole but of course none of them are prepared to step up to the plate. I know this will make my sister fall through the cracks but I have to put my family first. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, you have caregiver burnout. Also, why aren't these self-righteous relatives stepping up to help? They can all pound salt. It's a crappy situation for anyone to have to go through. Am I the a-hole for posting a picture of myself wearing my boyfriend's military uniform? Okay, so like, I don't know if I'm really the a-hole here but I do think it's a bad situation so bear with me. This happened two days ago. My female 25 boyfriend male 29 is in the military. We've been dating for six months and we live in different towns. He comes over to visit on weekends but I never been to his hometown and whenever I try to visit he's always busy. He came over to spend the weekend with and brought his military uniform. He was in the shower while his uniform was sitting on the bed. I felt bored and decided to put it on and took a picture of me wearing it. I then shared it on my Facebook as my story and thought nothing of it. But once he found out he blew up and started yelling at me saying I should have never touched his work stuff. I was baffled at his reaction I said I was just trying it on but he said that I was being reckless towards his work. When he found out I posted a picture of me in it he lost it completely. He told me he can't believe I jeopardized his job for shits and giggles and for some internet likes. He was making me nervous so I told him he was overreacting. He kept mumbling that I screwed him over because the uniform had his name tag on it. I asked so what and he said that I don't get to frick with his job and sabotage it with how I was acting. We had a fight he grabbed his stuff and went back to his hometown after demanding I take the picture down and wipe it off. My phone. I've been trying to contact him ever since but still got no reply. I left him messages for messenger and he reads them but doesn't reply. Am I the a-hole? I think I might have messed up but part of me says this was an overreaction on his part. Dude, he got pissed because he has a wife Lamau. The military has a strict dress code, but they really hate adultery. That's what this is really about. Everyone sucks here. Am I the a-hole for not helping my mom with her bills anymore after siding with my wife and acting rude to my pregnant girlfriend? My ex-wife, 30 female, and I, 30 male, are still stuck in this long drawn-out divorce going well over a year and a half already. My mom hasn't shut up about convincing me to take her back because we've been together 15 years my ex had an emotional affair for 5 months but because it wasn't a physical one my family feels we should have worked it out since that's what my ex wanted. 8 months after leaving her I met my girlfriend Alice, 28 female, then when we decided to become a couple I went ahead and officially filed for divorce. My girlfriend is over 5 months pregnant with our little guy, but my mom hasn't supported this at all even though she always complained about wanting grandkids. We moved in together 2 months ago and right now my mom has regular appointments for physical therapy 3 times a week. I've been the one taking her because it's an hour drive and she can't be behind the wheel that long. Usually she makes the short drive to my place then we go to her appointment. Sometimes I get there late so Alice lets her in to wait for me to get home. First time my girlfriend said my mom called my ex right there in front of her and was passive aggressively talking about how our place looks. Then she says she told my ex that she misses our old house. I told my mom that was extremely inappropriate. She acted like she didn't do anything wrong since it's not her fault my girlfriend was eavesdropping on their conversation. That she would obviously hear because they were in the same room. Stupid little things like that. Bring up my ex-wife or something from our past. On Monday she was over again waiting for me. We got into this big fight when Alice told me she's done trying with her. 
my mom told her to stop trying to get some kind of approval, it'll be a waste of time because I won't be around her once I supposedly come to my senses about my ex and have a real family. I really don't know what set off this kind of reaction out of my mom but knowing her it was probably random. My girlfriend was extremely upset. That made me see red. Safe to say my mom didn't go to her appointment because I sent her home. My brother agreed to take her instead but I've also refused to help my mom in any way since she claims she doesn't believe the family I'm making with my girlfriend is not real. She's on a fixed income that barely cover half her rent. Since she doesn't work my brother, sister and I pitch in every month on everything so she's covered. They're coming down on me because they can't afford to take care of her themselves. And while they get she is way out of line she relies on me for financial help. My mom has told me I can't punish her for her opinion just because I don't like it. Honestly her talking to me makes me want to help even less. But still I want to know if that makes me in a hole since it does fall on my siblings too. Not the a-hole. You could be petty and tell her to ask your ex for money since she cares more about her than she does about you and your family. Am I the a-hole for calling my new kittens my babies? This sounds silly but hear me out till the end. I, male 24, have been taking care of cats since I was 15. I love them I love having them around and so far I've been a cat dad to over 9 cats. My girlfriend of 7 months likes my current cat Lily and treats her well however, she does comment about some behaviors of mine that she thinks are weird. Like insisting on having Lily in bed to sleep. Lily recently had babies, cute little kittens. I was so happy I took a pic and posted it online with the title saying that I'm now a cat dad for these cute kittens. And that they're my babies. My post got lots of likes and reactions, but when my girlfriend saw it she picked a fight with. Me calling it cringe that I constantly refer to these kittens as my babies. She told me it's just weird and low-key creepy. I told her I call myself Thar because I'm the one taking care of them, like a parent and a child. She told me to delete the post because some of her friends saw it and were like hmm. I asked her to explain and she lashed out and said that I can't call myself cat dad and call those kittens my babies. She said that it's creepy and that unless I impregnated Lily then I should knock it off. I was dumbfounded I said she's being ridiculous and refused to even talk about this anymore not now not ever. She threw a fit then went to stay with one of her friends. Said friend wanted to talk me into just doing what my girlfriend wants to curb the peace but I stated I did nothing that was personally offensive or harmful. We're still fighting about it and she keeps on about how inconsiderate I am to keep doing something I know she's uncomfortable with. Am I the a-hole for calling myself cat dad and my kittens my babies? Hell no. I'm a tattooed son of a bitch with a redneck beard and a hick accent. I'm also a cat dad and have no shame saying it. They are my babies. I'm never having kids and these fluffy bastards are my biggest joy. Your GF can take her toxic gender standards elsewhere. Not the a-hole. Edit, cat tax? Am I the a-hole for parking across my two paid parking spots? My husband and I live in an apartment complex which has underground parking. As part of our rent we pay for two parking spaces, but we only have one car. The parking area underneath the block is quite tight and one of our spots is next to a corner wall. However when someone parks in the next corner wall it overlaps our spot. This means it's quite hard to get our car in and out sometimes. Recently people have been parking in our second spot and we've had to leave notes to politely ask people not to do this. To counter this my husband has begun. Parking across both our spaces, in the middle of our spaces essentially, but the other day someone left us a rude note saying we shouldn't park like this. Am I the a-hole for using both my car spaces when I only have one car? Not the a-hole, it's your parking spot. No you are not in a hole for using parking spots you pay for. Am I the a-hole for wanting my sister and I to be treated equally? I, 17 female, have a sister Sabrina who is 3. I was visiting last weekend with my dad and stepmom and she left all her accounts and things open on the laptop and I saw that Sabrina has a college fund. To reiterate, she is 3. I bought up that I didn't see a fund for me at dinner. She told me I should talk to my mom and dad about it. I found this weird because her and my dad have been together since I was 5. I just thought it was so unfair that they wouldn't have money set aside for me also. So I bought up her blatant favoritism for my little sister since she already has a college fund the age of 3. She gets all mad and says that I'm asking the wrong person. I told my mom when I got home and she said that my dad and stepmom should have money for me for college. Today my dad calls me and says that I would have to go to local community college and he would pay 50% of tuition for college. I told him that it was bullshit that the focus should go to me since they have plenty of time to worry about Sabrina later. He just said 50% is what I'm getting and I would have to pay the rest or take out a loan. So I called my dad TA for favoring Sabrina. Read between the lines. Your dad is broke, this is your stepmom's money funding her kids college fund. You're the a-hole. 